I'm not saying my phone background is sure it's just the people that it might be. Discovery, go at throttle up. everybody this is united launch alliance delta 4 wgs 10 live launch that launch is scheduled for almost exactly one hour from now actually almost hit it on the head three seconds off so um it's a cool night for me let's start with that wgs 10 is a satellite it's the 10th in the wgs system hence wgs 10 and it's replacing a series of satellites called discus 3 uh, that largely is replaced largely is replaced at this point and the reason this is special to me is because 
the Discus 3 satellite system is the satellite system that I used to use uh, on the ground, wherever I was. It was the system I largely would tap into. There were others, there were commercial providers, but from a Defense Information Systems Agency or DISA standpoint, it is the system I use the most. So I know a lot about the system that they're building with the WGS family, because it's not a constellation of satellites. So I'm, I'm looking forward to questions that people may have on that specifically tonight, because I can offer a plethora of information about it. But that launch is about, about an hour away. Uh, coverage from ULA will start, they said at about 6.54. They're not going to do a whole pregame show like NASA usually does. So we'll we'll I have it up. We'll go live to them when they go live. But um, we're gonna do a couple other things. Um, we have some information and other space news we want to cover. We'll do Q and A as always as we go through this because I stop whatever we're doing when someone has a question. And on the note of question, um, Odd Dustin left me some questions in the BOSA channel of the Discord, and I encourage anyone who watches a VOD wasn't able to ask a question to do exactly what he did. Uh, he left me a series of questions, and I'm going to do my best to answer them the next stream so that, one, I don't answer them to one person, and two, uh, we continue producing content on a multi-platform basis that people have access to so that maybe they didn't think of that question and go ahead and answer it for them. Um, so the questions have to do, we were watching the last broadcast was last night, and we watched uh, Expedition 52 take off from uh, Baikonur, and the Soyuz takeoff. And during the broadcast, there were some questions about uh, the tower, the emergency tower, which is a form of um, of escape system. Uh, there are many different ways in which escape systems work, uh, but there's effectively two main ways. There's ejection seats, which Gemini used, the space shuttle used, the, the Soviet shuttle that never flew, Busan, would have used, and there are escape towers or emergency towers which is what mercury used it's what apollo used it's what soyuz uses and then spacex is doing something a little different they're not doing either one of those things so we will get in to what those things are i'm bringing up the information now just so i can show the photos that go along with it because as i read up on this topic today to answer this question i found some of the information interesting So here we go, launch escape system. This is the tower, I'm gonna bring it up larger. This is the tower that would lift, you can actually see the rocket on top firing, vectoring away from a capsule type craft, and it would actually lift it from the stage it was attached to. That's what Soyuz would have used last night. You can also see there's a, a rocket firing on the, the, the side of the escape rocket that is pitching it over and away from the stage which is continuing to go up. So this thing launches and pitches over and the other stage continues to go up. This is the way Soyuz would have done it. This is the thing you see fire off the top of the rocket in Apollo 13. And the question was asked, who was the first person to think of it or use it? You will endure this loss and learn from it. Neds, thank you very much for the host. We are Let the hey, organ space notes nerds. ring out from the Abbey. The sisters are gathering. How's it going, Ned? I saw you uh, You were playing, I think it was The Sims. I've been in meetings for two days, so I haven't actually seen what anyone's playing. Um, but thank you very much for the host. We are currently discussing launch escape systems. It came up as a question yesterday from people watching the VOD. Celeste, that's what I saw you playing. Uh, people were curious what an escape, a uh, launch escape system was because Soyuz kind of showed theirs last night. So... Uh, what I just showed everybody to go back to the graphic is this is one version of a, of a launch escape system or an escape launch system. It is on the top of the capsule. And again, for the 20 people that just got hosted in, it's the first stage is going up and this sits on top. And what happens is it fires off, the rocket pulls the capsule off, and then there's a pitch thruster that pitches it off so the stage can continue to go through. The failed stage can continue to accelerate up or in whatever its vector is. And the crew in the capsule is thrown off to the side. That's one way. And the, the question was, who were the first person to think of, the first people to use it, the first person to think of it? So credit goes to uh, Maxime Faget, the first person to think of using a system uh, in 1958. But related systems to this, how does the capsule catch itself? What do you mean? Like, how does it know? 
Put that cookie down. Oh, if it tips off to the side, well, one, um, there are gyroscopes on board uh, all the craft you currently see flying. Either they're, they're uh, digital, optical, or they're mechanical. And it's a series of three rings. It's a series of three rings that help determine, and this is what the difference between navigation and guidance is. It, it helps determine position and orientation of the craft. So the craft knows if it has to turn itself based on the orientation of the rings within the gyroscope. So that's one way. The tower's one way. The second way uh, is an ejection seat. And as we uh, said before, and it's going to be repeated on the VOD and tough, that's just how it works with trying to do both. The ejection seat is exactly what you think it is. Gemini had it. Um, the space shuttle had ejection seats. They actually fired on Challenger. And the uh, Soviet Busan and actually the ESA Hermes shuttles, which never flew crewed, uh, all had ejection seat systems. But this is the really cool thing. This is Crew Dragon 2. These are the Draco thrusters that are built into the spacecraft. And yes, and in the event that Crew Dragon needs to lift off of, Dra of Falcon 9, you can actually see the service module still attached. And those thrusters would fire and bring it up off of the S2, the second stage. Screw that. <laughs> so the interesting thing about Crew Dragon specifically is one, no one's ever built them into the vehicle before like this. Uh, second, SpaceX is toying with the idea of trying to land it back on Earth with these thrusters if their fuel, if their propellant's still intact. So the idea would be come through the atmosphere, use a drogue chute to slow it down, basically make it subsonic, and then just like they land the boosters, they want to land the ship this way. <laughs> without the service module attached, obviously. The only reason they didn't do it for their demo is NASA said, I don't think so. NASA said, we would really appreciate it if you use parachutes like everyone else always has. That is also true, laser scope. So we just slams into mountain ranges. And on that note, uh, two of the astronauts that went up on the International Space Station last night uh, were originally launched back in October, and they did have to use their, uh, their abort tower. They, there was a, a stage problem with separation Wow, that's interesting. The catbot caught my own thing. Why is catbot even on? Anyway, they uh, they the the tower actually pulled uh, Nick Haig and Alexei Ovechkin off their S2 because one of the four boosters around the bottom of the Soyuz failed to separate correctly. The system engaged. It sensed a failed separation and it fired them off. The problem was is they still had to use the S3's thruster to get them where they needed to go. This the the Soyuz it, uh, emergency tower did not do the job entirely and that's fine all the systems work but in a true ELS system they the the whatever the mechanism is the tower or the ejection seat or in the case of crew dragon here the boosters on the side would take care of that um so the next question oh, we'll go back to before we answer the rest of it, we're doing uh questions right now because there was VOD questions and I've encouraged people to go to the BOSA channel after they've watched a VOD, ask a question if they have one, and we'll address it in the next the next broadcast. That's what we're doing right now. But to cover what we're doing tonight, uh, we are watching WGS-10, which is a ULA, a com combined Lockheed Martin Boeing spacecraft. It's a Delta IV. It's actually one of the last single-stage Delta IV rockets that's going to fly. And it's putting into orbit uh, one of the satellites in the WGS system. It's the last one, the 10th one. And the reason this is this hits me close to home is for those of you that are new, don't know me, uh, I used to be in the United States Air Force and part of my job was communicating with satellites. I had to relay what I was doing back to a satellite. Um, thank you very much, Whisperer. So the WGS family of satellites operates primarily in the X and KA bands and it replaces a satellite system or has replaced a satellite system I used to use, which was called Discus 3. So I can talk a lot about how this specific satellite works and what it does because I was aware of the WGS planning when they were building these things, and I also understand how we do warfighter communications with, from a SATCOM perspective, because that's what I used to do. So if there are questions anywhere along the way with that, I'll be more than happy to answer them. But we'll go back to Dustin's question, and we'll come back over to here. Dustin asked another question. Who was the first to have the escape plan on these rockets or capsule types, not the space shuttle, and was it us or the Russians? It was, it was basically... You have to think of the space race. They were thinking at the same time, effectively came up with the idea at the same time. The Soyuz was the first manned 
Russian craft. I would say we we had the idea because Mercury Redstone 1 had an escape tower. It failed. I mean, Mercury Redstone 1 was a test vehicle, but that escape tower was fired and failed. And Yuri Gagarin went into space on a Soyuz that had an escape tower. So we kind of had the idea from a national space program perspective at the same time. But from a design and engineering perspective, the first written down concept uh, was Maxime Faget in 1958. And what was the fancy iPad in-flight app? I don't know. Uh, this is this is pretty funny. Uh, we con I, con I actually had a conversation at work about this today. So if you watched the Soyuz launch last night or watched the VOD of it, uh, you will see the astronauts or the cosmonaut in the Soyuz had an iPad in front of them, and they actually had like they had a towel, they had a tablet, and they're sitting there holding this tablet during the launch, and there was an attached pointing device that they could tap on the screen for, and Prior to liftoff, I asked the question, and several other people in the chat had the same question of, what is that? Why wh and how are they going to stow it? Instagram post, exactly. We said, make sure you update Instagram that you're on, on the Soyuz at Baikonur. But our thought was, what are they going to do with that? They were like four minutes away from the launch, and we're like, why do they still have stuff out? It turns out they didn't stow them. They kept them out during the launch. Uh, no, they held them. <laughs> them in their hands the whole time up and what i and this is c complete hypothesis i was talking with two people at work who enjoy nerdy stuff and our theory is i need to watch the, the launch again and i need to try to identify which which crew members were holding the device because what i believe it is is the soyuz front ca uh, console is all done in cyrillic and while the American astronauts get Russian language training. I'm not sure they don't have some sort of English to Russian reference of the console in front of them. That would make the most sense to me. The idea that it might be interactive, uh, that raises some questions. I also have some questions about how SpaceX is doing this with touch screens in front of people because there's huge chance for slippage of fingers in a touch screen interface and someone else at work brought up the very good point. Switches and knobs work when there's no power. You can flip a breaker with a switch with no power. If the power goes out, yep, don't want any finger slippage, exactly. But if the power goes out, as it was in Apollo 13 in the CSM, the switches were flipped ahead of time to set up a correct chain of amperage to bring that craft back online when they did restore power. That would not be possible if your interface was entirely dependent upon electronics. If there's no mechanical switches, effectively, if you're removing the knobs and removing the switches from the astronaut's fingers, you're completely reliant on having electricity at all times. Yes, Dustin, that's why I bring this up. It's, it's concerning, but I don't obviously know enough about the proprietary information that's inside that capsule to tell you for certain there is no mechanical interface. Yes, sir, little rabbit paws. Eddie the Head is our bot. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he, will, he won't like the fact that she's using all caps. She's a guest. I understand that. So, we, if you look up behind me, again, for those of you that are new to this, 45 minutes until this launch, ULA has stated that they will start broadcasting at about 6.54. They are not going to do the full hour pregame that NASA or SpaceX would do. How am I supposed to express myself? Well, Leech is exempt. Regulars, you hit five hours in the channel, Eddie won't bother you anymore. It's, it's there to prevent spam. It's there to make sure new people, new blueberries, don't roll in and just go, Hey, pay attention to me. Yes, Ned, you can use all the caps you want. You can express yourself that way, Rothmar, unless you are in the Discord. That's correct. So, uh, I brought up a couple other things. I... I I posted this on Twitter earlier today, and I am filling some time. Uh, what's up, broski? <laughs> I brought this. Uh, I, those of you who are um, are regulars know that I have these already. I have. I'm going to do my best to show them on the camera. This is an Apollo commemorative pin. Um, it's a pin back like that, and I have uh, had them. They're made by a, a vendor on Etsy who I contacted and I made a fairly large order. Uh, and then there is the space shuttle pin, which is cool. Uh, you can go into. The subs actually got to look at them. Those are those. So I have a couple of those that I am what I'm now calling the space goodie giveaway bag. And then I also am adding these to them to that today. 
This one says pull to eject. It's actually yellow. And this one says remove before flight. And it is red. And they are keychains or key pulls or whatever. But as we do space giveaways, those will be among your choices to pick from should you win. So, what's going to go on tonight? Um, there was already... Well, Lord, a... yep. Yes, I did. I'll tell this story now. <laughs> so, Nedge won patches, and because I was... I actually did it on the stream. I said, I put the, the thing in the package. I swear to God, I put it in the envelope that I later addressed to Nigellin. But what I apparently did was took a perfectly plain empty envelope, sealed it, and then mailed it to her priority. So, she got a big bag of air from Pennsylvania. Uh, the next batch of... <laughs> of giveaways that I do, I will be correcting this. Yes, sir. Priority $8 for Pennsylvania Air. Exactly. So whenever, um, we also had a good conversation because she originally had asked for the white with red text NASA worm logo patch. And the intent was to put it on her backpacking pack. And I raised, you know, that's going to get dirty. And she's like, I, you know, hadn't thought of that. So we're going to swap them out, give her the red one with the white letters, which will accumulate less dirt while on the trail. Uh, along with uh, making sure she gets the, um, I think it was the mission specialist patch is the other one that you won that night. But we'll make sure that those get out to you. I still have not located that envelope, by the way. So I will have to, because I'm a fucking mission specialist. Hell yeah. So with this launch tonight, uh, and again, interject at any point, ask a question. But the launch, uh, you won't get that leech. The reason commands does not exist is because... There are certain commands that I have to have public in order for certain functions to work on Eddy, and I don't want people to be able to see them that are new and trigger those commands. But this launch tonight. It was really originally scheduled for 6.56 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, they slipped that launch to 7.11 p.m. In, uh, Eastern Time, and I believe that can only have to do with the weather. Um, if we go ahead and look at what is going on with the live updates... Oh, you can watch the mission profile. I'll probably do that. Uh, ULA is doing some really cool stuff. They are providing all sorts of information on a live updated page about what this launch is about. But the last thing that they've, they've been posting, fueling and everything else, fueling all clear, like the hold and check for fueling was hours ago. They've been fueling it, obviously, if they're this close to a launch. So it's had nothing to do mechanically with the craft. It can only have to do with probably cloud cover. So there's an 80% clear from the weather wing down in Kennedy Space Center because this is launching from pad 37A tonight. I would just assume that they wanted some clouds out of the way. And they shifted their launch by a small fraction so that they could accomplish and accommodate that. I understand. Yeah. If I could come up, and I've suggested this uh, to Scorpio, I would like a checkbox in Scorpbot to say omit from commands list. Just blanket that so it does not reply. <laughs> Thank you, my friend, for the host. We are talking through uh, expand satellite system that's launching on Delta Four from ULA Clown tonight. Vision activated. How you doing, my friend? So there was a video in here. Uh, this is actually something I wanted to talk about because this is where are we? Not that one. I had this someplace. You know what? Let's bring it up. The story behind the art of the WGS10 patch tonight. This symbol is paying homage to Boeing. WGS-10 is the mission name. There are 10 stars around the outside, signifies the 10th satellite. The platypus was part of the original WGS-1 logo, and it's back in there. And for the warfighter, that's near and dear to me, because that's what these satellites, this satellite and its family are for, communicating with advanced frontline personnel and advanced ops personnel on the ground. That platypus is awesome. Yep. That's it. He's like, yeah, he's like, oh my god, why do I have solar panels sticking out of my ears? But anyway, that's the W that's the WGS10 patch. It uh I've been doing I've been trying to make sure the patch art makes it onto the countdown screen so that you guys can see the mission patches as we do this. Uh one other note, for those of you that are looking for a crew dragon patch, uh follow the Kennedy Space Center or the Air Force Museum, I'm sorry, the Air Force Museum's uh store Twitter account. They have been posting when they get those patches in stock. They've been going very quickly, uh, but they're, they're going for $20 versus if you want one of those on eBay, you're going to pay about $90 right now. 
<laughs> yeah, why am I most platified probably? Yes. So coming off of that, timetable. This is a cool info page from, uh, from, Bo from sorry, it's Boeing and Lockheed. That is who makes ULA, United Launch Alliance. Um, this is a cool graphic showing the... <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't trying to correct anybody. I was reading it and it said platypus. It's platypi, isn't it? Yeah, it's platypi. And I said platypi. <laughs> so the um, it's a geosync satellite, which means it's going to go up to geo. Ge when I was in school, we were taught that geosynchronous satellites are at about twenty three thousand five hundred miles. If you look here, it's probably a little hard to see. Uh, I might be able to zoom in on it, but if you look here on the orbit at separation. It's 23,900 apogee, which is its highest point of ellipse. Its perigee, which is its lowest point of ellipse, is 234.3 nautical miles. They're not, it's 234.3 nautical miles. So that means it looks like this up here, this ellipse that you see. Up here is the perigee, I'm sorry, the apogee, and down here is the perigee. So the perigee is super low, 234 miles, and the apogee is 23,928 miles. That's what those mean. But what, what will eventually happen is it'll settle in. They will get it into an orbit that is they're going to nominalize, circularize this orbit at this distance so that the satellite effectively stays in one place above the Earth all the time. And they're, they have it listed as a, at a 27-degree inclination at deployment. They're going to have to bring that down to zero over the course of correction burns if they intend to have it be geosync. Anybody got any questions so far? I know it's a lot of nerdy verbiage. Uh, I just know a lot about this specific system. I was excited whenever I saw this launch come up. I was like, I know, I know I can talk about this one. So, on that note, let's go back to ULA's update page. When does this happen? Um, good question. Look right below me. <laughs> so on that um i have this scene built the clock always sits behind me if there's a launch it counts down if we're just doing a the course correction show where we just do space news it counts up to let me know how long the episode's been going at a glance and the clock below composing message is my time eastern time so it's 1833 or eight i'm sorry now 1834 or 6 34 p.m eastern time but we are going to go and find that video again that ula posted and we're going to give it a watch it was in here somewhere. There it is, the mission profile Ten, video. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Our sixty-eight A engine ignition. One. And we that have liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta Four rocket. That's what I wanted. The Delta IV RS-68A engine and four solid rocket motors, or SRMs, ignite to lift the rocket away from the pad. Shortly after liftoff, Delta IV begins a pitch over to attain the proper flight path while minimizing the pressure the vehicle experiences during flight. The Delta IV reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound, at 34 seconds. Speed of the sound SRMs relative to the design of the vehicle. 33 seconds into flight. Seven seconds later, the first two SRMs are jettisoned, followed by the remaining two SRMs. During ascent, WGS-10 is protected inside a 5-meter diameter payload fairing at approximately 3 minutes 19 5 seconds. 5 meters is an important number right now. Jettison. Approaching main engine cutoff, Delta IV is burning propellant at a rate of 991 pounds per second, located 109 miles in altitude and 229 miles downrange. At 3 minutes 56 seconds, propellant levels deplete and the booster engine shuts down. Six seconds later, the Delta IV separation system activates to release the first it's stage. one stage. The vehicle now weighs a little more than 9% of what it did at liftoff. At 4 minutes 15 seconds, the second stage main engine ignites. The second stage and WGS satellite are now in the first burn. This burn will last a little more than 15 minutes. That's nice, a big blank video. 19 and a half minutes right, into the flight, cut off of the main engine, or MECO-1 occurs. The mission now enters I'll a 10-minute I'll be CECO-1 if this is stage two, but... Nearly 30 minutes after liftoff, the engine is restarted for a 3-minute, 20-second burn. Approximately three and a half minutes later, the second engine cutoff occurs. At 36 minutes, 50 seconds, the second stage releases the wideband global SATCOM satellite 
for the United States. Wideband. Why is it called wideband? Anybody want to know the answer to that one? Because the satellite in the X-band frame operates on a transmit of 7.25 to 7.75 gigahertz. Um, that's a pretty wide band. It's a wide range of frequencies that are possible to tune a transmitter to in that band, wide band. Um, what's actually interesting about the way that this and all communica communi yeah, communication satellites work is you can't transmit to the satellite and then have the satellite send the signal back down at the same frequency. So the satellite itself actually takes in one frequency, remodulates it on board, and then sends it back down at a different frequency. So the downstream frequency, the downlink frequency, is actually 7.9 to 8.4 gigahertz in the X-band range. KA band's way up there. You're talking like 20 gig plus. Um, I didn't do a lot of ops in KA band. It was kind of new when I came online. I did some in KU, and I know KU is in the 23 to 25 gigahertz range. That's way, 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 way higher than your microwave. Uh, for comparison's sake, for those of you following 5G news, C-band is also one of the bands that are using communications. And it's actually a little bit lower than X-band. It's somewhere in the 2.7 to 3.4 range, if memory serves. Uh, they're actually talking about adopting that frequency for the ground so that 5G can talk over it. And that's going to cause problems with the remaining satellites in orbit that still leverage a C-band footprint. But that's what X-Band means, or KA-Band. When you hear those acronyms next to the word band, they're talking about a specific range of frequencies that are utilized by that specific piece of equipment. And the problem with it is, is the FCC basically just told, gave NASA the finger whenever NASA was saying, we still have C-Band birds up there for weather and stuff. And the FCC was like, no, we have to have 5G before the rest of the world or they're going to use, you know, Huawei technology and it's a security risk, which is a fair statement, I guess. But it does bring into the idea that the signal could be jammed. Jamming. While I'm on this topic, let's say that uh, Hrothmar is yelling and I'm yelling. The idea of jamming is I just need to yell louder than him on the same frequency. And that's what it is. We're both producing waves within the same band, the voice band, right? The audible spectrum of wavelengths. So the idea is if I don't want people to hear him, I must produce power at the same frequency high, much higher than him to basically flatten him out. That's, the, that's all jamming is. So if I wanted to jam an X-band satellite, I would need to effectively target it on the same frequency and modulation that someone else was to flatten their signal out by simply overpowering it. Like fighting my washing machine for microphone real estate. Yes. Every time you're fighting background noise, you're effectively fighting a jam when you're fighting it in your own OBS setups. It is a form of jamming. It's just audible jamming. If you brought, if you brought up a spectrum analyzer and had a omnidirectional microphone, you would actually see that set of frequencies below your voice frequencies and you would see that you're stomping on it you'd still hear it the only way to completely remove it is to drive yourself so loud that it makes those wavelengths unintelligible but by doing that that's when you start peaking but it's the same concept in communications except when i speak and harathmar in this example would be speaking we're not changing the pattern at which we produce the sound so that's what's called modulation where there are several forms of it that are in use today. Code division and spread spectrum multiple access are the two common ones where there's a, a, a logical or the numerical string that says produce a bit here, a bit here, but not here. So it's almost like binary within a pattern because someone else is going to produce their bit where you're not producing a bit. So the only way to jam a specific signal is to know which portion of that string in the spread spectrum or code division access string they're using so you can step on them at the correct time. Or you would just have to stomp on everybody a broadcast without modulation at a huge rate of power and you could just flatten it down to the floor and take over and almost assuredly blow up the transponder on whatever you're trying to talk to an interesting maybe we did this example is when i was in school for this in the air force one of our projects was to come up with a jamming example the speaker at the mcdonald's drive through is not encrypted and does not use modulation of any kind it's open frequency so all we all you would need to do in theory is figure out what frequency they're on have a transmitter tuned to that frequency and transmit 
at the same radio receiver that the speaker the drafter is using. And you could effectively become the McDonald's person instead of them being able to talk out. You could just key over them and t- until it was your turn to talk and then talk in, and they would never be able to say anything. The drive through is wired only, not all of them. Not all the drive The ones in Georgia were not. to clonk that follow button. Because we sat there, Taco Bell vet, the ones at McDonald's in Georgia, say circa 1998, were not. Uh, Sergeant Kavanaugh was pleased and chastised us for our ingenuity, but we were able to talk over the speaker at a drive through But that's an example of where jamming would come in useful. You're effectively, you could replace intelligence is the idea. And intelligence is the data, the signal. So you would effectively be saying, I don't want their intelligence there. I want my intelligence there. And it's actually dangerous in the, to a forward operator because you could tell them the wrong thing. But then you get into decryption, co-opting with that modulation, knowing both of those things and knowing the encryption keys next. And it's impossible to know unless the encryption itself is compromised. Like the key that runs the encryption algorithm is compromised, which doesn't happen. So in any event, that's X-Band, that's satellites, that's jamming. But that's a a really, really harsh, rough overview of how that works theoretically. Um, Whenever I went through school, the world was beginning, believe it or not, to transfer from analog to digital modulation and multiplexing, which means they used to actually interweave shifting in polarity. Imagine your sine waves going like this, right? And you want to put another carrier on that same frequency, well, then you have to add it next to it like this. So you have one going in an x-axis tilt and one in a y-axis tilt that are both transmitting down the same conduit at the same time, but they're 90 degrees out of phase. They can both go the same way because their peaks and valleys of the signal never touch each other except at zero. If that makes any sense. That's, that's how it would be done in analog multiplexing. Phase shifting is still done, but it's less necessary because you're recovering almost a 30 a times 30 factor doing it digitally than doing it analog. The only downside to doing it digitally is anytime you shift or translate the data in your transmission, you lose a little bit of it because you're changing it. Anytime you change that data, that intelligence, an aspect of its integrity gets lost. That's why records are the best, most clearest way to listen to music because you're putting an analog recording directly onto the disc versus an analog to digital translation that occurs. Yes, flack is lossless pretty much but not to a 100 percentile lossless the true analog is still the analog original recording multiplexing yeah then you get to trunk multiplexing and supergroup multiplexing and all kinds of imagine so multiplexing is you have a phone line and the person in the apartment next to you has a phone line and you both need to dial out at the same time well we can't we don't want to deliver a dial tone that's reserved for just the building. We want everyone to have a dial tone. So multiplexing is that interweaving of your signal with their signal simultaneously before it's translated at a modem to a frequency that it can be usable external to the system. So it's basically, we it we were taught, it's weaving signals together at a digital level. You're you're effectively saying, your bit, 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 your bit's a new word now, your bit. It's Y-U-B-R-I-T. There it is, Y-E-R-B-I-T, your bit. But it effectively sequences in parallel each communication line's ability to coexist on the same channel because the multiplexer on this side and the demultiplexer on the far side know the sequence. They, they know which sequence they're supposed to say, you go here, you go here, you go here, you go here, when they disassemble that, that weaving. Digital multiplexing in a, a 32-bit world was 256 individual channels per group and then you can take that 256 phone lines or 256 internet lines and you could take that with another 256 and then start weaving those groups together at another multiplexer and you can start stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking and that's how that that's how that all works that's how they make all the phones and all the networking cables over radio work because at some point your internet's likely hitting a satellite Welcome to Fixtures Firehose. Any questions? <laughs> so we got about 10 minutes until this thing goes live with ULA. And I just kicked my desk, so that's why it looks like I'm shaking. Clown brought up this earlier, that I need to have a scene where I walk up and down flight control, because that's this flight control. I don't think you guys have seen this one. Some of you just came in today. This is mission control. 
if I could take that off the screen and actually show it correctly and not be a doofus. This is Mission Control. This is what we use for Kerbal Space Program. Um, but it was brought up by Dr. Death that what we should do yeah. is ask the community for pictures of them with their backs facing me so I could put them in the chairs. Oh yeah, um, blueberries caught is how many times Eddie has caught blueberries using and spamming stickers. Uh, some of you have witnessed that before. Swear jar is when anybody gets upset with how something is gone. There's a swear jar command, and then I count how many sparks people have wasted in this channel um, just as a growing total. So that's what that's for. So we're going to bring ULA up because they're going to come up here shortly. Um, they say they're live, but I don't believe that yet. Their channel is live. So that's their channel up above me right now. Um, that's about it until we have the launch go off i'm still more than willing to answer any questions anyone has especially on <laughs> everybody wears a t-shirt that has a smiley face and then there's dustin with one with a middle finger on it that would be well doc would probably wear the middle finger t-shirt too that'd be great Toofy, what's up, my friend? How's it going? Toofy, been playing a lot of Devil May Cry. I actually passed out last night while you were playing that, and uh, I fell asleep earlier today with Captain Erock's stream up just because I was trying to accumulate some sparks, and I said hi to him. Boy. And I got this nice free stream of him with his phased, like, multi-Captain Erocks, and just... I should have taken a screen cap of it, I just didn't think to. Just got home from work, and boy, my, my pants off. It's the only way to fly, man. So, 22 minutes to launch. We have probably about six to eight minutes until they go live. Okay, they're saying now on the screen, because I, I have it small here, they're saying on their screen now at 6.49 start time for their commentary. So that's actually in like a minute. So what we'll do is we'll follow along at home with them, and as questions pop on their broadcast, or I want to add something into it, that's what we usually do with a NASA broadcast. They're just longer. And with a SpaceX broadcast. Um, so first time this format, they're watching a ULA launch, Again, this is it, this doesn't matter to most people, but Delta Four is going away. The Roco Loco, thank you for the follow. Laser scope two. Oh, it's it's designed to interrupt. I don't, I would rather, you know, take the time and say thank you. That's why it's super loud, but I definitely would rather say thank you for the follow. I don't get that many because I don't, I don't run a schedule. I run a launch schedule most of the time now. So, well, we do uh, a lot of them. We do a lot of them. Roco logo type exclamation point discord. Anyone that wants that information, my schedule channel in the discord, the outlaws discord. Uh, I keep very up to date on when launches are happening. Also, if you miss a launch and you don't want to go to YouTube, you can go to coursecorrection.space. That is the new BOSA home. Uh, there you will find my write-ups on things. You will also find embedded VODs. And you can also find this stream embedded into a live tab in case your work blocks Mixer. You can still get access, access to Mixer. And I totally forget what I was talking about. Oh, Delta Four and Rarity. Delta Four, which is the middle rocket in this picture, not the two massive side boosters, is a single stage, technically. You could say in this configuration, the, w, the, the Delta Four medium four configuration, which has four solid boosters around the bottom, you could technically say that is the first stage, the main launch vehicle being a st the second stage, and then they did show a third stage, but here launch we director. go. Launch vehicle is ready for launch. Mission Three. director. You have permission Two. to launch. We have ignition of the RS-68A main engine. And we have liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV rocket. Mark 1, execute. And we have an indication of spacecraft separation. At Space Launch Complex 37, a Delta They're saying 935. I don't think they changed their clock. The WGS-10 mission for the United States Air Force. Good evening and welcome to Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. I'm Andrea Lenhoff. 
I'm a systems engineer on the Vulcan Centaur development program. Vulcan and Centaur the are both different ULA rockets. And we're proceeding towards liftoff Centaur, at 7:11 p.m. Eastern Time. A few minutes from now, the count will enter a planned 10-minute hold. There are two That's planned why the holds clocks are different. Nine and a half hour launch count. The planned holds give our time gives our team additional time to resolve any issues prior to entering the terminal oh. count. They're saying now 740. No, that Play can't be right. The 45th Space Wing Weather Officer recently briefed the launch team on current weather conditions here See if they've changed that. We'll leave her talking, but we're going to go see if they change their date, their time again. Zero. Keep talking. Zero percent. The Refresh the that so we're not behind. And the temperature is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So the weather is within the launch commit criteria and looks favorable. So this is as of 647, so four minutes ago. Upper level winds have been verified acceptable for launch at 711. So they have not changed their launch time. Well, I'm old, laser scope. I don't know how to use YouTube, but Today's thank you. This flight will take a southeasterly heading the jump suit. away from our launch pad. I mean the flight Cape suit. Canaveral. I'll show it off for you, Mango, just because you showed up. On this sleeve, the American patch from the same supplier NASA uses. On nine, this sleeve, eight, you have seven, six. The Five, Ares series four, that NASA never six, flew, eight, and now the Orion one. patch. And we have up here is the NASA off. meatball the that United everyone Alliance has, and this rocket. is actually one of my old military plates. Uh, this the will Delta soon be replaced RX with one that has hey, exactly what a cluster. But it's a cool mission rocket. patch, which you can still get, Short and I love course. that mission Delta patch, or that series patch, so I grabbed it. Proper flight path while minimizing the pressure the vehicle experiences. Hey, this is the same video we watched before. The Delta so we're going to bring this down a little bit until they move on to other content. The SRMs burn out one minute, 33 seconds. What are we talking about? Looking sharp. Thank you very much. Um, the new nameplate will be an Air Force colored nameplate with Air Force astronaut wings, and it'll say Fixer on it to fit in with this whole theme. At approximately 3 minutes, 19 seconds, the payload fairing is jettisoned. Approaching main engine cutoff, Delta IV is burning propellant at a rate of 991 pounds per second, located 109 miles in altitude. And so we did launch launches. Let me scroll back through checks. I know we were talking about something, and I want to remember what it was. Three minutes, 56 nope. seconds. We do, no. levels okay, I'm caught up. The booster engine shuts down. Six oh, seconds later, I was still Delta talking about the rarity of a Delta IV. Um, the Delta IV, there are not many of this configuration left. I think there are only four more launches, including this one scheduled. It's not like it's a big deal to see what most people would call a single stage launch. There's not two stages to get into orbit or into past 90 kilometers. So it's it's a rocket configuration that's going away. But I did say earlier that five meters is important. Does anybody know why I said five meters is important? Anyone that read the blog or has heard me talking about it probably does. Any idea why five meter diameter rocket is a big deal? Mango says no. She doesn't know. I'm looking at laser scope. Nope. So Orion. Orion is NASA's capsule that's going to take astronauts to the lunar gateway around the moon further out into space and is supposed you're long rusty on AE so the Orion is the capsule that's going to take these missions past high earth orbit we're talking to the moon to Mars the vehicle NASA has been developing is called SLS or space launch system Supposed to fly for the first time in 2017. It has not flown yet. It was supposed to then slip to mid-year next year, and again it is slipping. SLS is not ready. Orion is pretty much ready. And uh, Jim Burdenstein, the NASA administrator, was testifying to Congress earlier this week, and he opened the door to the idea of sending Orion around the moon on a commercial rocket, which immediately sent people scrambling to which rockets. Well, Orion has flown once, and it flew on a Delta IV because it's a five meter f diameter fairing or S2 that is the same diameter already as Orion. If you wanted Falcon Heavy to carry Orion, you would have to ha have a translational interstage that translates 3.3 meters to five meters so that the Orion could sit on it. Now, there was some chatter that says a California company has already submitted a proposal to NASA but bear in mind, SpaceX and Boeing are both California companies, and Delta is Boeing, Lockheed Martin in ULA. So we'll see. But that's why five meter and a five meter Delta four 
or a Delta Five, maybe, this is, Delta Mission Control. is important. To Looking forward to to Orion. Raised hand, but was holding baby Ryan knew the answer. <laughs> Yes, so laser scope, yes. It, it's, it's not the capsule size because Orion actually bubbles itself out a little bit in its design, but the diameter at attach is five meters. So they're saying T minus four, they're holding. So here's the hold. The hold here is to go for their last round of checks and last checks on the vehicle. take this big what's up man not much Alabama, the Delta four, medium plus five four, and, and I'll turn this back up for you guys powered by an aerojet rocket dyne rs 68 love the fact a company called rocket dyne exists it sounds very 60s rocket motors an aerojet rocket dyne rl10 yes e2 engine if you look below me this is including the stage. hold time they are currently holding at t minus four WDS minutes yes 10 is protected it's about 13 and a half minutes until launch payload fairing Get off of there. Final launch Why are you still showing began on February that red 18th, bar? When WGS-10 was encapsulated inside the payload fairing. On February 26th, the encapsulated payload fairing was transported to the mobile service <laughs> this tower channel even more for now. MST. Thank you. At Been doing, launch, this thing this is our fifth live launch together. And made it to the Delta IV rocket. And starting Mondays, I've committed to this now, Mondays will be course ago, correction. Uh, we did one show already. We did an hour and a half of space news. Showed videos, went to JPL, looked at where spacecraft and asteroids were. PSI, I already have the script ready for this coming Monday, Monday 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We will be doing course correction episode two. Will not be a launch, but we will just be talking through space stuff. System, if you have a topic you would like to discuss on course correction, go to Discord, go to the BOSA to channel, the and let me know, or tell me on Twitter. But I'm likely to forget it if it's on Twitter. North of the Delta IV rocket. The Delta IV rocket stands 217 feet tall, or about 21 stories. And I'd like to know why that bar is there. I want to get rid of it. Thousand pounds fully fueled. There we go. The RS-68A main engine and four solid rocket motors combine to produce approximately. Also, for mods on the note that just popped up in chat, you'll notice the rules changed. I am going to about start opening launch later, streams to a teen rating because I feel that I should be off. encouraging high school and junior and middle school students to watch if they want to and not exclude them. If we're presenting information and can encourage youth engagement in Today's STEM, I think that's good. I'm no, no means an engineer, but I can I can present system. it as awesome. And if I can Built make a kid Boeing, think it's awesome, WGS let's do that. This is an important element of a new high capacity satellite communication system, providing enhanced communications capabilities to US and allied warfighters for the next decade and yeah so this is a uh, a defense information WGS systems WGS agency or DISA satellite system replacing the discus 3 system that i used to use defense satellite communication system the constellation cool. wgs is augmenting learning is good indeed we'll just have to curb our usual vulgar enthusiasm for those streams i'm going to keep keep ksp 18 we'll simply because we're already down that road with some Tim naming Mallard, of ships boeing software um, engineer and sam wiley U.S. Air Force <laughs> Chief of Business That's Operations. Fair. Also, make sure to stay tuned after launch because Sam, Wiley, and I will be hosting a game of trivia on Twitter featuring Ooh. questions about past WGS missions. Yeah, that's why we love you, Tufi. A Toofie. few minutes after liftoff, questions will be posted on ULA's What's with Twitter the orange? Account. And the first person to comment on the because question... Because that's the color the they are when they're made. It actually adds prize. weight to paint them. Answers and winners will be announced shortly before spacecraft separation. Yeah, lasers on it already. The original shuttle the launches, webcast, the external fuel, fuel tank, and the boosters were all white. And later on, you would see the red external, the orange external tank because NASA said, man, all that paint we painted on that sure added mass to the liftoff. So they don't paint them. But yep, lasers on it. That is the answer. You should go... Uh, uh, Charlie Young, the first shuttle test pilot, um, talked about it, and that's the only reason I know that's the answer. Uh, he's one of my favorite astronauts ever. Got to cut costs for that rocket. Yep. But uh, it was interesting because I, I watched. I was like, wait, well, why is that white? That's the reason. The original one was was white. <laughs> <laughs> 
your, your nail polish is the the mass increase you want to take take down. I mean, just rip them off. That would get rid of even more mass, right? So they're still at T minus four and hold. Realistically, okay, about nine and a half minutes. Okay, we are still uh, working uh, troubleshooting on the CBC bottle press and the. Uh, Oh my 33 pro, people uh, watching. Demand. You know what uh, we're going to do a, with 33 uh, people watching. And, uh, we need to continue our troubleshooting. We're doing this. Uh, I do not have an estimate for you at this point. We're right. giving away something while we're waiting for this hold to end. Down, it's exclamation point down, raffle to get in. It'll cost you 100 tributes. LD, Hopefully, LD, via following for the new people, they got that. This is not held to regulars. And again, you can get one of these, which is a pull to eject pull tab for your keys. You can get one of these, a remove before flight pull tab for your keys. Or you can get one of the two Apollo commemorative buttons I have or the shuttle commemorative pins that I have. It'll be your choice. Please be willing to share your address to me in Discord if you enter. RC, verify solar radiation limits acceptable for launch. Verified. So I see Riot, Leech, Mango, and Clown in the pool. If anybody else wants in, now's your chance. There's a lot of people lurking. If you're here, you like space, I don't care. I usually keep raffles minimized to just regulars, but I have a Discord for that too. So if you want one, get in on it. Eddie, thank you very much for posting the link to the new web space for BOSA, course correction dot space. Supply control. Perform launch on time verification. One minute left. Exclamation point raffle in chat. Still T minus four and holding. Just dropped all the white paint in Discord. Excellent. OSM, verify the whole fire switches in the program. <laughs> An $8 dollar box of air. Oh, Dreams really do come true, Leeds. It was a padded envelope of air. Thank you very much. RLM, verify red line monitor and vent table are in the correct configuration for terminal count. Verified. As you just heard, the team is currently working an issue. Uh -oh. We plan on extending the built-in hold to work this issue. So they have an issue, which means the clock, what's being launched? WGS-10, which is, flight is an X-band, KA-band capable Hushley, satellite, which will support warfighters in the field. It replaces the During Discus 3 system, which I actually used when I was in the Air Force. Kurt held critical roles on multiple programs, including 10 seconds, I, last chance, exclamation point, raffle to get in. Nighthawk, Space Station, and various classified programs. He finished Tufi. his career as electrical and Which do you want, Tufi? Do you want the pool to eject, the remove before flight, or one of the pins? Let knowledge. me know in, uh, well I'll remember, but let me know the address in a Discord DM, please. Able to deliver a quality product while adapting pool to, to eject. You got it. and keeping pace with a rapid launch rate. Kurt was a caring individual. Take it off the keychain for you now, my friend. Career, family, and friends. He exuded joy and humor wherever he went. Mads has won one of the Apollos. That was the Patreon giveaway for this month. We will do another Patreon giveaway next month. Patrons get a free giveaway chance per month that's in the sub channel. That's their big perk. Actually, I kept it was a, I, when I got them, I kept one of each. There's a pull to eject on my, my everyday backpack now, and I put the. Uh, Remove before flight on my keychain. Can I actually use a pull tab for my keys to get them out of my pocket? No blink the video frame without consent. So they're on a hold. So this, my clock is now going to be That's off. Right. They should have cleared the hold by now, but they said they're working a technical issue. They haven't told us what it is, or I haven't heard what it is. Indeed, Tufi, just one of these days, if Ace Combat ever gives me joystick support, I'd gladly start playing it again because it was a beautiful game. That's also a good use for it. NLC, this is flight control on one. Go. Launch on time, verified. Roger. Launch on time, okay, verified. Now all steps are complete prior to status nope. check, except for the- They don't intend to fix it, Tufi. Working on with the uh, pneumatic system. All personnel will stand by. So this is an interesting LB, view. LC, this, look at this launch facility. Do you see how there's actually a building? You see LB the train tracks down yeah, here? Time we're in, Effectively, that to, would uh, move this building to and from the Roger rocket. Kicker. That's how Slick 6 is out in Vandenberg. That is not how 39 and 40 pads are, but they can actually bring a piece of a building up to the rocket and then go inside the half of the building and interface directly with the rocket, which is the correct way to do this. And I'm quite shocked that SpaceX, 
I know they wanted 39A for the history, but I'm a little shocked they haven't. The incorrect way, what NASA did to launch the shuttle. Do you see how there's an actual cutout in the building? A cutout where the rocket would fit inside? They can go up inside that building in the background when it's wheeled up to the rocket and work on the rocket. T minus four minutes and holding. Yeah, it's like a really big mechanic shop. That's exactly what it is. As preparations for launch continue. Soon, launch conductor Scott Barney will pull the launch team for the final go. To so that the guy countdown. sitting there in uniform is almost assuredly one of the satellite controllers. There are three major proceed. defense satellite control positions worldwide. I used to talk to them all, all the time Vehicle because you'd have to report your power, systems, your frequency, so they knew craft, how to allocate the US transponder. Force, but I guarantee range. you that guy works for them with the Air Force Space the Command. The vehicle system readiness pool includes electrical systems, hydraulics, Yeah, the, the crawler is nothing systems, because, except for because we can. Control, if you watch the Soyuz VOD, they move the rocket to the pad with a train. They put it on a flatbed <laughs> train car and they wheeled it in reverse to the pad. There's actually a video in yesterday's VOD showing them moving the Soyuz that way. It was amazing to see. That's exactly the design philosophy at Roscosmos. It's worked since Gagarin. Why would we change it? By the way, uh, I think it was yesterday was the first was the anniversary of Alexei Leonov in the first ever space flight. He was the mission that went up after Gagarin that no one knows his name. Anyway, know the first U.S. space flight. First American to walk in space. I'll give you 500 tributes. Nope. Alan B. Shepard was the first American to fly into space. He did not orbit. Freedom 7 was a 15-minute flight. I'll give you a hint. It didn't happen until Gemini. Nope. It's who, I th it's who you thought? So the answer is Ed White. He was crewed with Jim McDivitt on the first manned Gemini flight. He was the first American to walk in space. He was out there for twice as long as his Russian counterpart. This, the tragic side of this story is the only time Ed White would fly. He was one of the three astronauts killed on the pad of Apollo and plugs out test. Along with uh, Gus Grissom and Roger Chaffee. It's all up here, like an encyclopedia. It's scary. On spacewalking notes, history next week. Who knows what history is going to be made in space next week? And it has to do with spacewalks. We'll replay the 500 tribute bonus game. The ladies, that's correct. Laser gets it. If you're just joining us, the team is currently working the first multi-person, all-woman spacewalk is we next week. To update you as information becomes Christina available. Cook and Anne McLean will become the first female pair to spacewalk together, and only women. Ever. It's pretty cool. Yep, ladies night in near Earth orbit. Their hold's still on. They have not moved. So this this countdown is about to get they don't have to pay the cover, exactly. This countdown is definitely not right anymore. We're rolling up on a minute away from when they said they're gonna launch, and they have not moved their four minute countdown. Even though they indicated they were ready to launch. So let's come back in to the Delta Four broadcast and bounce out of this. Go back to live. We are live. And we'll see if they've posted any more updates here. I don't we'll continue to hold countdown T minus four with engineers assess this technical issue. No new target liftoff time has been established. So that's nineteen oh six. So that's four minutes ago. Oh, there we go. Nedge heard it and I didn't, and it's in my ear. They're still working an issue. Thank you very much. So, 500 tributes for laser. Well, <laughs> this is useful for other things. Uh, when we play XCOM, which we haven't done in a couple weeks, in KSP, you'll, you'll need those tributes to buy into those games. 
So we're waiting for them to give an update. I'm actually going to bring that live feed up in an independent tab I can see just so I don't have to keep bouncing us out of the rocket here. So let's go here and let me bring that over to another tab that I can see just in case they provide us with an update. This is our first hold in BOSA watching launches together land. Nothing can be done about holds. Yeah, you need tributes to, to buy V-Bucks. There's a button right there. You can press to buy V-Bucks with the tributes. It says, get free V-Bucks codes. That's using your tributes. Definitely press that button. Still no update. So while we're waiting, we'll leave that big, but we'll go and talk about this for a little bit. Do, do, do. No retreat, no surrender. That is not party on, dudes. I already did download the mission overview. Fix has started this tradition where he's got Noob and I recording all these stupid clips about each other and adding them to each other's channels, right? But Fix started this thing and he like pitted us against each other somehow. And none of these clips are about Fix. Yes, there are Fix some. Fix can give you the library if you want it. That's also true. I definitely have all of them. I didn't make him do it. I just said, hey, let's start recording funny things Gilly says. And hey, let's start recording th funny things Perm says. And then I started giving them to each other and they started adding them to their own streams. It's amazing. What's the mission or payload? Jimmy the Lad, welcome in. Uh, this is the payload. We'll bring it back over and show it to you. WGS-10 is a satellite that is communicating on the X and KU bands. It is designed for DISA use. It will Not be used by... We have the broadcast you are currently listening to. It will we also be... just started a blog, which can be viewed at our Let website. Let her say what she's saying. I'll turn her down for a second. Um, but the satellite is designed for also, for deployed personnel the in the military, U.S. military, to make over-the-horizon uplinks on X and KA band. It is the last in the WGS series, Twitter, replacing the Discus 3 series. Hopefully it answers your question without me repeating too much of what I said uh, when we came live. But if it doesn't, please let me know and I'll, I'll elaborate further. I'm sure everyone else would love to hear me say it all again. So no, Hercules, you're saying that explains so much like why all the sounds exist on, on each other's channels. Yeah, that's kind of my fault. You know, I love it when you talked. We talked about, man, we talked about wideband and modulation multiplexing it didn't talk that much about encryption because encryption is just remodulating on a secret key that's basically what encryption is but we, we did we talked a lot of nerdy stuff coolio no worries man um if you're interested jimmy the lad and anyone else who's lurking we try to cover every launch that occurs after 3 p.m eastern time and we post them to coursecorrection.space as well as to a YouTube channel and I try to keep the schedule as to when broadcasts will be updated in our Discord uh, as quickly as a launch changes. Um, if it's as close as a change was tonight, I will tend to just address it during the broadcast or via Twitter, but to give you a general sense of when these broadcasts go live, I try to keep that schedule up to date. And again, while we're talking about it, uh, those of you who were here last Friday, there is a whole, there's an opportunity to talk about this. Um, I started doing a... Red light monitor. A red light monitor. Hold on. Well, it's about tree fitting. DC on the second stage locks airborne tank PU delta pressure. It's just above the upper limit of 4.76. So the locks tank on the second stage is above the red line for nominal pressure. Liquid oxygen. Yes, uh, RLM is reporting a, uh, an alarm. Second stage locks, airborne tank, uh, PU, Delta P. Provide. They may scrub this on that one. Team provide recommendation. If they do, I have cool. some content we can still cover. So, locks, liquid oxygen, is mixed in a hydrogolic reaction. Through it, it, it takes a liquid fuel, makes it a gas, puts it through a, a fuel pump, and combines it with another gas into a combustion chamber. Those two gases, when they touch are instantaneously combustive, and that's what produces the thrust of the rocket engine in a hypergolic model, which this second stage uses. So that LOX tank pressure is too high, which means if they try to make the liquid in the tank gaseous for the purpose of that combustion, it could blow out the tank. To explain what that alarm means. A parallel in NASA history is 
on the very first Lem flight, which was Apollo 9, uh, which McDivitt, again, was the commander of that mission. Rusty Schweikart was the Lem pilot. And at launch, the supercritical helium tank on the Lem itself was not past the line, but it was approaching the red line within the nominal band. And what's his name? His last name's Kelly. He was the main designer of the Lem. He gave the go-ahead, and then when they fired the Lem in space for the first time, the extra pressure actually chugged itself out of the engine. They had to fire it a second time, but it didn't cause a disc, the disc in the tank to blow. Um, it's the same similar concept here. If it's past the red line, that means it likely would blow the pressure disc out. A break. Can you send pictures, Riot? of the lab. Can you take a picture of it? So what we're going to do here is for people that walk in while I'm away, it says go, go, go right now. I'm going to set this to this time just so it'll start again. Yeah, and it should go and say hold when it counts down. I'll reset this clock whenever we have a better judgment of when this is going to occur. I'm being told to take a break. Mango, sleep well. It's good to see you. Thank you very much for stopping in. I know that I kind of baited you into it with the giveaway stuff, but it is good to see you. Uh, we don't see enough of you, and I know the time difference contributes to that. Um, Riot, if you do have, I would love to rather use you and say, hey, look what Riot showed us, then go grab a generic picture of, uh, of locks. Uh, we'll definitely talk about it on stream we actually go so far as present a little bit of information on how hypergolic how the fuel combustion works we could talk about how raptor is using a lossless recombustion system he's looking for a pick sweet so what i'll do is we're on a hold we are holding due to a, an s2 locks pressure critical indicator and i will be right back because if i don't get up and walk around leech will tell mads and mads will start pet texting my phone and i don't want to deal with that so i'll be right back i'll leave you here i'll leave the audio on i'm gonna mute myself if you need a break we have been sitting for about an hour and 15 minutes i would suggest that we get up walk around and stretch our legs it doesn't we're not going to miss the launch if you come back within four minutes so take that opportunity now to get some drink get a restroom break and walk around i'm gonna do the same i'll be right back You will endure this loss and learn from it. This is Delta Mission Control at T minus four minutes in holding. The team is currently working the issue reported early, earlier through a test. While we wait, let's look at some launch footage from the previous nine WGS launches all atop United Launch Alliance, Atlas V, and Delta IV rockets. WGS SP-1 spacecraft telemetry data has been acquired. Congratulations. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV rocket carrying the WGS-3 spacecraft from the United States Air Force. mission for the United States Air Force. I am back. 
still holding at four. If anyone has any updates from the break that they heard, please let me know. But we're still, to my knowledge, now that I'm back, waiting on an S2 pressure problem with the LOX tank. And just to give you guys a heads up, I have a hard stop at eight. I have to be done by eight. So if we do not launch, if we launch close enough date, I can stretch that by a few minutes, but if we're not launched by eight o'clock, what, what I will do is Monday, we will watch the replay of this uh, if it does not go up by eight o'clock. Um, I also don't expect you guys to all sit past too much past eight o'clock for a launch that's on indefinite hold. But while we're waiting, I do have some other pretty cool info to give you. I've been digging out some stuff. I'll use some of my course correction material. So well, let's go pull this video up. Anyone knows what Mars helicopter is? Let's talk other nerdy stuff while we're waiting. It's always good to have backup material. Mars helicopter is a small autonomous rotorcraft helicopter, except it's got rotors that spin in opposite directions. And it's going to go with NASA's Mars 2020 rover, which is supposed to launch July of next year. Um, it's going to demonstrate the viability of a heavier-than-air vehicle flying around within the atmosphere of a foreign body, a planet. It's not possible to do this on the moon, but it's pretty cool stuff. So let's go ahead and bring up this while we wait. That's the 2020 rover. That's the Mars helicopter. Yeah. It's amazing. It has to be whittled. It says, I'm over here to the rover. It's awesome. It's okay, Ryan. It just, I, I would rather share community contributed content at all. But I appreciate you looking. I hear talk on the other channel. Waiting an update on a new T zero. So still waiting for an update. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about Mars helicopter on Monday. We talk about it now because I think it's really cool. Uh, it's not vaporware. It's it's built. It's going to launch next July with the 2020 rover. And what's interesting about it is the idea of a rotorcraft working, a helicopter working, is or anything that flies in atmospheres, you must generate lift that is that exceeds the body's gravitational pull on your mass the way it works on earth is we have a thick atmosphere so we can generate a lot of lift under an aerodynamic wing if we thrust air under that wing the ratio of mars atmosphere to a normal earth atmosphere that produces that lift is about a 100 to 1 difference which means they had to make to answer your question leech a whittle a whittle flying Waft, because they have to keep the mass down because in order to produce the lift those rotors have to spin almost 100 times faster than they would have to spin on earth to, to get it off the martian surface and so in order to generate that lift it is a mass calculation just like it would be to go rocket in space they have to generate enough lift to lift the mass off the surface that's why it's small it's cool though We'll talk more about 2020 Rover Monday night, 7 p.m. If you guys want to know what else I have on that list of topics already, uh, just because I'm trying to fill in, LCN we're one. vamping here. Hold on. Crazy. Okay, radio out brief, both of the anomalies we've been working. Roger, LD net one. LD one. MD net one. MD one. Proceed, AC. 
Okay, first one was the uh, second stage LOX Delta P that uh, had the RLM trip. Uh, we have reviewed that. Uh, it was based on the situation at the time. No impact to uh, proceeding with count. Our recommendation is proceed. That's the LOX tank. LD concurs. MD. MD concurs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, second was the uh, ongoing um, uh, attempts to establish the booster bottle press uh, scenario. Uh, we have established and, and shown repeatability with our latest plan. The PE &E operator uh, uh, has uh, shown that the recovery works fine with the set points we've established. We're recommending uh, disabling uh, two lines in RLM. That'd be line item one and nine. And we've established with the PE &E operator also the limits to be monitored to and uh, uh, at what point uh, it would uh, need to call hold if it does not make it. We do have confidence in this plan and recommend proceeding. So that, if I heard correctly, has to do LD with concurs. MD. One of the one of the boosters. PNE LC network. And they're going to have to make some sort of adjustment in order to get the booster into on one. a nominal condition Monster, for takeoff, uh, and they just outline the line items in their plan to get it there. Uh, bottles are at flight pressure. CBC bottles are at flight pressure. Roger. And you are uh, ready to uh, proceed with the anomaly team recommendation. So this might yeah, go soon. Uh, listening into the anomaly team recommendation and ready to proceed with that. Roger. RLM, LC. Go ahead. Please disable line items one and nine. They're Very proceeding nominal. with that anomaly recommendation now. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out during a hold. My, I wouldn't expect everyone to just chill during a hold, but thank you very much for continuing to be here. Again, we're just spectators, but I appreciate the fact that everyone's interested enough to continue to just hang out and chit-chat. Line items one and nine have been disabled and verified in the red line monitor program. Roger. I'll get back to Monday programming once they're done going through this. <laughs> it's interesting to hear. NASA does not typically relay in the These open are here to what party. their anomaly procedures are. Hey, Doc. <laughs> it's okay. I'm here. They can clear the hold. So they've established that the locks hold um, is not an issue or that it was based on a reading that they don't feel will cause a problem. Uh, there is, they're referring to bottles, which I'm assuming it may be the S1 stage. They were talking about fuel lines and disabling what I would assume to be some sort of crossfeed. That would eliminate the booster actually because the boosters are solid fueled. So they're going through an limit. Uh, they have an anomaly recommendation to make alterations to the configuration of the craft with respect to those fuel lines. And it looks like they're doing that now. It's good to hear, Doc. Delta mission control at T minus four minutes and holding. The launch team has worked two is issues and is ready to proceed with the launch count. Woo! We are still waiting on the official announcement of a new T zero. So they're going. They they are going to proceed. That's awesome. So we will we will get a launch. How you, uh, Doc? You're feeling good. That's good. Um, you missed a breakdown of X band satellites in the VOD, uh, which I used to communicate with. The WGS system replaces those. You may find it interesting. We also talked a bit about modulation, encryption, uh, phase shifting of frequencies. It's radio stuff, satellite radio stuff, but uh, it is interesting if you go back and watch the VOD and uh, want, I think it was about probably the 30 minute point. We did give away our first one of these as well. Uh, we will do another one Monday night if we get the viewers. My threshold for viewers is about 12 before I do a giveaway. We added the remove from flight pulls and the Tufi one, the first pull to eject pull. Uh, could be used for your coat, like Leech wants one for. I don't want to know what Toofy's attaching his to. Uh, I have those on my bag. So while we're waiting for the establishment of new T0, I will reset the clock when we know that. Uh, I do want to talk about what's coming up Monday. Again, it'll be a regularly scheduled program now. I have enough 
I have set up enough feeding of information to myself to produce the necessary references to talk through stuff. Uh, so course correction on Monday, 7 p.m. will include more on Mars 2020 rover, though you probably just saw the cooler part where we play it. We're going to talk about opportunity. Uh, opportunity produced a mosaic photo in its last transmission of Mars. It's cool to look at. It's big. Uh, we're going to update you on bearish sheet. I'm not going to go more into that except to say it's good news. And we are going to talk about Lunar Gateway, especially with respect to how the current NASA budget proposal or the White House budget proposal as it affects NASA may impact Lunar Gateway, how it's impacting SLS or may impact SLS, one is AC. future right. plans for SLS. Okay, we need so to, uh, Monday, 7 p.m. Delta P, uh, second stage lock. Um, recommendation. Uh, some additional information has been reviewed. And, Plus uh, more stuff. To to six, Roger. Uh, proceed to Net6. Provide a recommendation. Wilco. Wilco. Anybody know what Wilco means on a radio? Clown. Do you know what Wilco means on a radio? Two if he gets it, we'll comply. Anybody know why there's common shorthand on radio transmissions? Why why people that commonly operate on radio systems like the shorthand? And again, I'm, I'm asking questions because we're waiting for a new T0. Quicker, yes. Universally recognizable is the other one. Wilco, if it gets caught off mid-syllable, there it is, easy to recognize, yep. I know generally if I hear something that sounds like Wilco, they probably said Wilco versus what I have to think that individual may have said. Tufi, you probably know this one as well. Yep, you don't have to repeat it all over. Exactly. Tufi probably knows this one. Lima Charlie. Anybody know what Lima Charlie has to do with respect to radio communications? Nope. Lima Charlie. Does anyone know what Lima Charlie means with respect to radio com? Nope. Loud Lima and Charlie for clear. There it is. Another way that people will say it is you are five by or five by five. I don't know the origin of that one, but I know I've used it. Celsius red light monitor. Go red line matter. Roger, we did trip the same uh, OTC on the Delta P that we had discussed earlier, and the anomaly team's discussing it on six. So copy that. Rogue Rogue knows the answer. Thank you very much. Five volume by five clarity. I did not know that. I learned something. Thank you. So the communication that's going on between the red line monitor and I guess the, the main controller is that they went through the anomaly procedure and they tripped the same monitor. So I would imagine they are back to where they were on this specific thing that's holding countdown right now. So we'll continue to wait and see what they have to say. This is an interesting picture we're going to bring up. This launch visibility should go up tonight. Permacorp doesn't like Hercules. This is the visibility of this Delta IV launch tonight from the Cape. So, one, this is at 60 seconds. At 120, it goes out to here. You can see this launch in North Carolina, technically at Virginia Beach. That's pretty awesome. Got anything else cool in their live update blog I can talk about while we're waiting here. So I am going to go into their official release on this. The Delta Control, T minus four minutes hold. Countdown is in there to plan a little. Yep, 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 yep. That's nothing we don't know. 
Along with Anomaly Chief Dave McFarlane and Delta Ops Center reports the launch team continues to troubleshoot first stage helium bottle pressure issue. That Put is the, the bottle boom, issue. Boom into my Mads, heart. what's up? So that's the problem they're currently trouble they're troubleshooting. The helium bottle in the S1, that's the fuel. Like, it's either a line or cross feed redirect that they're working on. That was almost a half hour ago. This is about 10 minutes ago. Anomaly Chief Dave McFarland, Delta Ops Center have reported closure of first stage helium okay, bomb pressure. Straight out brief the second stage Delta P issue. Roger, LD Net 1. LD Net 1. MD Net 1. MD Net 1. Proceed, AC. Okay, team uh, evaluated a little further, recognized we were uh, close to the uh, top of the uh, limit. We have recommended a uh, new topping target and also the disabling of line item 272 on RLM. And with that, uh, we, uh, so this is the you. other issue Roger, net top, with net the locks in stage two. Now, correct. That is correct. Roger. LD con LC concurs. LD. LD concurs. MD. MD concurs. RLM LC. Go ahead. Please disable line item 272. Roger and work. So what I heard on that was that they're establishing a new topping limit, which is not talking about sprinkles. They're talking about the amount of total fuel in the locked tank. They're going, I would imagine, to reduce that Roger. so that they can decrease pressure in the locks tank. And we'll bring that back to where it's supposed to be. So I'll keep reading that, that, uh, that anomaly update they posted about 11 minutes ago now. Delta Ops Center has reported closure of first stage helium bottle pressurization issue that engineers were discussing. So they considered that issue closed. Go the one. Go ahead, I would please. say it's reopened now. Yes, sir. Please coordinate a new T0 of 23 colon 52. Roger, 23 Good copy. RC, LC, net one. RC and one. Please coordinate a new T0 of 23 There it is. 23 Correct. Copy and work. UTC. AFC Don't worry. That is this time. They just established a new T0. That clock should now be running on stream. LC, ALC. Go ALC. Canton clock has been set for a new T0 of 23 colon 52. We're currently at L minus 14 minutes. Roger. So they're a little bit, they're, they're into that minute a little bit. <laughs> well, the reason I have an 8 o'clock hard stop is because my girlfriend is being amazing and bringing me sushi and shrimp balls from our, our favorite uh, Japanese restaurant. And I, I would I want to be sort of done. So we're going to run over a little bit here. If they hold, and they're probably about, I'd say, 40 seconds behind us on this clock. I'll adjust it once we have a running clock again. But right now, you're looking at about 13 minutes or so, 13 minutes plus until we launch. T minus four minutes and holding. As you just heard, the team has established a new T zero of 7:52 p.m. Eastern time. Again, I have to say this every time: Perma Noob is a a game saver. My ability to quickly edit that clock uh, is using an application that he recommended to me called Snaz. It allows me to have multiple different timers running. Uh, all I need to do is go in and say, hey, the timer that I have displaying down there, change the, the T minus, the T zero time to this, and it re-updates everything. Roger. <laughs> I will okay, all ensure. Our clocks are set. We have an approved T zero. I'll make sure I thank Ash for bringing back, bringing me back my balls. I'll, pick up I'll, I'll mention that to her, Mads. Also, per our previous discussion, Mads, It's raining men, hallelujah, raining men. Oh, you don't get perm on that one. So I would imagine when they hit T minus four minutes, the clock on the YouTube video will start to run. I will continue to let this clock run as a general indicator. Like I said, it's within a minute accurate based on what they've announced on, the, on their stream. So if you need to get up, I knew that was going to happen. If you need to get up, again, if you didn't take a break earlier when we took one, and yes, I took a break at about an hour and 15 minutes, Mads, at Leech's request, you have not taken your break, and you want to see the launch in its 
total without having to leave the screen. You've got about 10 minutes or so until it starts to get interesting. LC, RD, RC on uh, net one. Go RC. Tedris is uh, right at this time, unable to support mandatory telemetry collection. We are no go for Tedris. Roger. Expected uh, resolution is beyond our currently planned T0. Uh-oh. Copy. That is probably going to exceed the 8 p.m. mark. They have another issue. I believe they referenced Tedris, and they say that resolution of, it had to do with telemetry, will exceed the currently defined T0. So yeah, it's not looking that good. We'll wait until they give a final update, um, and we'll go from there. We'll, we'll see what they do in reference with T0, in reference to that new Tedris information with telemetry, and then determine how we as a streamer are going to move forward here. So, while we wait on that... For those of you that were not here last night. This is the website that I referred to a few times tonight. This is coursecorrection.space. You'll notice it's got the BOSA logo on it because I own the domain and the, the site right now. But I am posting, you'll see video icon here. For video you'll see a write-up icon for something i wrote this is and i know mads read it because she told me it was approachable uh how i feel or what i see in the budget proposal with sls but if you missed the launch last night and you want to see a launch we're gonna see a launch tonight you see that i'm embedding the videos into the page so that you can just come here if you miss something and want to watch you don't have to worry about a youtube follow or a youtube playlist follow you can just come here and uh, and watch here this is Delta Mission Control at T minus four minutes in holding. An issue with NASA's tracking and data relay satellite system, which provides mandatory collection of Delta four ascent data, will relay will delay liftoff beyond our new 7:52 p.m. Eastern launch time. So it's NASA's telemetry system that is having the problem now. So another new problem. But let me get this video to a place where. A watch. I'm not going to have that go there. It was near the end. Yep, here we go. So I'm going to be quiet for a second. You can see two of me. This is last night's Soyuz launch. For those of you who would really like to see a rocket take off tonight. Initiated silicon, second umbilical tower separated. Booster the exception, ignition. indeed. Engine turbo bombs at flight speed. There she goes. And lift off. We have lift off of lift Nick Hay, Christina Cook, and Alexei Ochinin now on their way to the International Space Station. The craft is called so Burlock so 1. The commander thrust from his four boosters and single engine the first has named his Soyuz that every time. Feet in length, 24 feet in diameter liquid fuel for the first two minutes six seconds of the flight everything is nominal on board the crew is feeling great no through the clouds they go 40 seconds the vehicle is stable it actually does say go 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 this is burlock one burr b u r l o c burlock burlock one what a name for a craft but it actually does say go 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 one minute into the flight, everything looking good so far. LD, yeah, LD, I'll be happy when those S1 boosters fall off that and rocket and they're still flying. LD-01. Yeah, with the uh, issue reported so is by uh, RC with the uh, Tetris uh, 41 issue. I recommend extending a hold at this time. So they LD just made a recommend to extend hold. All right, team. Uh, monitor all your systems. Launch vehicle readiness uh, prepared. We'll allow the uh, range team to work the uh, issue and uh, look for a successful resolution of that and pick a T-0. Okay, so here's what's going on now. 
And this is probably going to be the end of us watching it. And I apologize for that, but again, it can do nothing about it. Tedris is the problem. ULA is dependent upon NASA to resolve a Tedris issue, and they have no ETA. None. We could sit here for hours for the Tedris issue to be resolved. So what I want to do is we'll call for our viewing an end to the launch here. We will cover the end of this launch when we do course correction on Monday. So it's one of those situations where this is rocket launches. This happens. There's nothing anyone can do about it. I would really want to see a rocket take off. I would be willing to sit here if it wasn't going to conflict with a commitment I've made. So we will end here with this. That said, come back on Monday. We will cover the launch. We will cover not only the launch, the payload deployment. We'll get to an endpoint with the payload deployment, assuming they launch tonight. They may not launch tonight at all. Yeah, it happens frequently. And for those of us who follow space stuff like Leech and Riot, and, and a lot of us are really big nerds, it happens. There's, but for those of you who are interested in continuing to be part of BOSA, watch these launches with us. Bear in mind that this is the fifth launch we've done together. This is the first hold we've had that has kind of ended a stream. All of our other launches have been successful. It's just the nature of the business. We will cover this with Course Correction Episode 2 on Monday night. For those of you that came in late, Course Correction is now the BOSA weekly show. I'm basically doing a video interactive podcast now. Um, I'm actually trying to line up some interviews so that I can put Skype up on that upper board and I can talk to somebody and you may be able to ask questions from the chat while they're there, the first person. Uh, I won't reveal names right now, but I had a discussion with them about you about Orion. Um, they have given me some expert opinions because they used to work for SpaceX. They could provide some insight on potential commercial crew or commercial launch avenues to getting Orion around the moon. I think it would be valuable if they're willing to come on. Um, that will not be Monday, but it is something I'm looking forward to doing if I can. That said, I do have an outline for Monday's show, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We will go back to uh, Mars, the, the uh, Rover 2020 and the Mars helicopter. We will get into the, the FY 2020 budget proposal, how it may kill SLS. We're going to talk more about international commitment to the Lunar Gateway. And we are going to go into other things that I sourced over the weekend. But those are the main topics now. Expect a 90-minute show. I look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you very much to Nigellan for bringing this stream to a new group of people and seeing it for the first time potentially tonight those of you that have followed i really appreciate it if you have found this interesting and you want to stay up to date on when these launches occur i encourage you to join our discord as exclamation point discord in our chat i have a schedule channel there which i try my best to keep up to date with the changes in launch schedules you can always find out when i intend to broadcast a launch because it is in bold Remember in that schedule channel that follow button we're going to make our own copters next week. Yep. So again, everybody, sad note to end on that there is a hold, but there's nothing we can do about it. Um, I will update when there is any news on this Delta IV launch in the BOSA channel. I We also have automated news in that BOSA channel that will tell you information as well. Post the link to the launch in the stream. Yes, if you would like to continue watching this on your own, which is a very good point, Doc. We will post the link. Delta mission control at T minus four minutes yeah. and holding. The range is working a tracking satellite issue that is a requirement wow. for launch. YouTube. The Delta four is so please tell me Eddie showing that link because my own chat window disconnected. The window tonight extends to nine oh five Eastern time. Yep. Okay, so that is a last good piece of information. 9.05 is the end of the Delta launch window, so you only have about an hour and 15 minutes until they can't launch tonight. Let's take a look at the amazing history of the Delta rocket. So on that note, everybody, again, thank you very much for being here. I'm sorry there wasn't an auto launch. We will cover this again. Let's look right, at next January week real 20th. quick. So let's yeah, go ahead and mute it. this. We'll look at launches coming up just before I go because I've got a few minutes. We'll exit out of there. We'll go back to the full screen view. Those of you that don't know about this website is one of many that uses the launch library API. It's the one I prefer because I can get video links off of it very quickly. This is the current launch that we are covering. Coming up, there is an Electron DARPA launch of R3D2, which absolutely has to be a play on R2D2, that's launching at 10.30 p.m. on March 21st. Day of the week is, I believe, a Thursday. Go yourself. So next Thursday, I do intend to cover this launch. 
uh if there is a link it's darpa so maybe maybe not but we'll see rocket lab limited is launching it so they may have a stream up for it so if rocket lab produces a link before wednesday we'll confirm the coverage on that after that vega prisma was supposed to launch this week it was one of the three i talked about during crew dragon that we had one two three in a row it was supposed to go up yesterday it slipped into next week and then it slipped again to march 22nd that's a 150 a.m eastern time launch now probably not covering that one looking down the road one space that is a civilian a commercial provider in china midnight march 25th probably not going to be a video feed for it long march is the chinese space agency that one's definitely not going to have a video feed and then you're into april april's an interesting month oh rabbit paws thank you for saying so i'm glad you enjoyed it um april we get in to talk about falcon heavy i may take a day off for that one we'll see but thank you everybody for being here falcon heavy is a big deal to me i'm a it's an awesome rocket but again thanks for being here guys let's see who's live uh, out in outlaws land we'll see who on the team is live first and see if we can pass a host off to them of course, my chat window does not want to work, so I have to do it via Eddie. Mork. And Mork is co-streaming with Captain E-Rock right now. I know they're playing Divinity Original Sin 2. They've been doing that on Friday nights. So we'll be taking you into a co-stream of the two of them, but we'll host Mork. So let's go over and see Mork real quick. Hey, it says Mork's offline. GG Mixer. Is Mixer having problems? See if Captain E rocks up. Well, you could always just complete the link for me. Oh, I typed Mork and not Mork. I didn't come down here. Because I'm a doofus. <laughs> there they are. So we're going to take you over to these guys. Mork on the left, Captain E rock on the right. They are running Divinity Original Sin 2 together. They've been doing this every Friday night for a couple of weeks now. Uh, say hi from us from the outlaws and from bosa and enjoy their stream or wherever you end up tonight in mixer land and again thank you for your time tonight hopefully you learned some things even though a rocket didn't lift off from a pad thank you doc uh we will it's good to spend time with her again new follows everybody thank you very much have a great night and i will talk to you no later than monday night for course correction